how you doing? Thanks for watching. Thanks for dialing in. You dial in? Clicking. I don't know. Anyway, it's Eric from Garden Fork. Another one of our beginning beekeeper episodes. I am an amateur beekeeper. I'm just documenting what I've been learning and doing. So today we're going to talk about what to do about preserving comb over the winter or if you just have extra comb you want to store because the biggest problem with comb is wax moths or at least in the United States that's a big problem. If you just put this, if you just leave this in a dead hive or you just put these in your garage, there's a moth that comes and will lay its eggs in here and just create a giant mess. Um, there's different ways to prevent that. Some people just leave these exposed to the cold air. Some people put them in a chest freezer, a deep freezer. I'm going to show you a way I just learned about um, and we're going to do it here today on Garden Fork. All right? Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden Fork. This hive here is expired. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, we're going to take it apart today and I want to treat all the frames in here because they're all empty to guard against the wax moth. There might even be wax moths that have moved in here already. We'll take a look right now, okay? So this is, um, I want to preserve this comb. This is beautiful drawn out comb. When we put a package in here next spring, it's going to be like a ready built house for them. I mean, that looks great. By the way, I use plastic, black plastic foundation on wooden frames and I drill a hole in the corners here. Um, that works for me. What works for you? Let me know in the show notes below. Um, I always love to hear from you guys because I learn from you all. All right, so let's take this apart. Ooh, that's pretty black. Um, oh, and you can see here, um, it goes down and over here. That is a wax moth that's larva is tunneling through the comb. Usually when a hive is healthy, uh, the wax moths still try and get in. They do lay some eggs, but the workers clean out the hive uh, keep it really nice and clean like this, but they will sometimes get ahead of you here um, and that is sure sign of wax moth. It, it'll make a mess of your hive, so you want to keep this from happening. So I'm going to show you how once we get this thing apart, okay? Some more wax moths here. You're going to also find the bees from other hives are going to be very curious when you're taking apart a dead hive. So, oh, there's one right there. Go on, little girl. There you go. All right, so I'm just going to take this all apart. We're going to lay it out, treat them, okay? So what I've got here is a one gallon sprayer, brand new, not have been used for pesticides or other evil things, okay? One gallon of water and a special variant of BT, which is Bacillus thuringiensis. Um, I'm gonna screw up the name. I'll link in the show notes to the specific variant and the product that you should buy here. This is a organism that will attack the moth larva but not the bees or their larva or eggs so this is safe to use on the frames several friends of mine use this for years spray this on this reduce or eliminate wax moth damage if you've seen wax moth damage you'll do almost anything to keep it from happening okay all right i have a pre-measured amount going into the one gallon um, I guess it could run a little water in there because I messed up, but I'm up on a roof here. So, maybe I can shake this up. All right, a little shaking. That did well. Pump goes in. I'll link in the show notes for the BT and a sprayer, okay? A 
adjust your spray here just to a test. You don't want to stream, you want to spray. I don't know if you can see that, but make sure this is mixed really well. So when you want to store all these honeycombs, honey, empty frames of comb, you know what I mean. Um, you can stack them outside. You can stack them on the old hive. But what I do is I take a piece of mosquito screening, metal mosquito screening, and I lay that down back on the old hive. Then I stack all the frames and lay another piece of this on, and then the inner and outer cover. This is just kind of insurance to keep other bad guys from crawling in there. Uh, mice or something. You know what I mean. I mean, it's all of what? Half a buck for some screening? Lay it on the bottom, lay it on the top, stack in between, strap them all tight. That was like a wrap, kind of, wasn't it? But uh, that's just what I do. And that's how I'll store it for the winter. This is a little frame that's stuck to this, so it's good to go. We've got screen on the bottom, screen on the top. Put the inner cover back on. Pretty cool, huh? Did you know that Garden Fork also has an email newsletter I put out? There's links at the uh, below the show notes here, or go to gardenfork.tv to sign up. Um, and I also have an audio podcast on iTunes. Search for Garden Fork Radio. So that is just one way to store your comb. How do you store it? I'd like to learn from you guys. I always learn from you. Um, in the comments below, that's always great. These things, um, strap them up, screen at the top and the bottom. You could keep them in your basement. You could, I think it's better to keep them outside because then they freeze as well. Freezing helps kill a bunch of bad stuff. All right, right here should be some more videos about Eric's world. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you. <laughs>